Well, I'm very excited because we are nearly there. I mean, in the last video, we planted the whole tank. I ran out of time. It's very murky. It's going to be. It's just got water in it with no flow, nothing cleaning the water. So the first thing we need to do is get our filters fitted. So we have got two Fluval FX6s. Now, this should be more than adequate to be able to filter this tank. And I also got two of the inline clarifiers as well, just to make sure that our water is staying crystal clear. This stops sort of like algae blooms. I've never ever used one before, but I thought it's, it would go with the filters, so why not? Now I've never personally set up one of these before, so I'm just gonna have to get it out and have a look at everything, sort of work it out as I go along. Well, that was quite good that I uh, started to take apart the media basket to notice that, um, hang on, there is media inside, but obviously you need to take it out the bag. Oh, and more underneath as well. So yeah, make sure you do that if you've got one of these and not just start it. Right, that's all back together and ready to go. Now, like with most filters, you get one piece of uh, hose and then you just cut it in half and you've got your inlet and outlet. And then to the piece you've cut, you attach your bits <laughs> yeah like your inlet thingy and your outflow pipes right that is all plumbed in you can you can barely see it which is perfect all inside ready to go all i need to do is just plug it in apparently it sort of self primes and everything so yeah, let's go. Okay, so I messed up a little bit. You actually have to pour water, fill the whole thing up before you turn it on. But in my defense, the only place I could see that written was there. Just add water and smart pump, that's it. But anyway, not to worry, you live and learn. Obviously, tanks this size and filters this size, completely new to me. Uh, I did the eight foot at the shop before, but the guys knew how to set up FX6s. So yeah, it's all a learning process and uh, now I know. And now you will know as well if you're gonna get an FX6. You've got to fill it up with water first. Okay, we'll try again. Oh, yeah, that's doing something. <laughs> oh, yes. Instantly flowing. Nice. So I've got the two nozzles. One's pointed sort of in this front direction. One's pointed at the back just to give the flow. Obviously, there's going to be another one the other side as well, but uh, I've run out of time now, so I'll carry on with that tomorrow. So it's now the next day, and the filter's been running overnight. As you can see, it's, it's not clear. Um, it won't be, because there's so much bogwood in there. Another thing, though, I forgot to fit the UV clarifier, which won't remove tannins from the water, but it will stop any sort of murkiness uh, from bacteria daft, that sort of thing. There's a lot of plants in there that are from tanks that are fully established, so they would have been covered in beneficial bacteria. That's probably having a little bit of a die off now. <clears throat> and as you can hear, I'm still sick. But that's the thing, when you're ill and you've got a project, you just forget about it. <laughs> Which I obviously haven't, because I just mentioned it. But yeah, I'm feeling a bit better actually. I feel more awake. I just feel very, very nasally, but who cares? It's not important. Let's get the UV clarifier fitted. So here it is. Um, it's, it's not that much to look at. We've got that. And then we've got these little extra bits, which I'm assuming are to go down sizes in pipe. But looking at that outlet, that looks exactly the right size. So I don't think I need those, but I do need that. So this pipe must go on there. And then that must stick on the filter. And then this must be the part that comes from the, uh, from the tank. So it goes all the way in, I'm guessing. There we go, look, all installed. Um, a lot more simple than I thought. Basically this join, goes on the main tap. And then the original one that was on the tap goes straight in that side. Make sure you clamp everything up, obviously, but yeah, I think we're ready to go. Right, there we go, all up and running. So that's one side done. Now I need to do exactly the same over the other side, but I'm gonna angle the inlets and outlets. So this one is directed more towards the sort of front and middle. And then I'm gonna have this one on this side more focused on the back. So that, that way we still get like a nice circular rotation over everything. Both filters are running and they have been for about an hour and a half. Now straight away, 
I added in some API AccuClear, and as you can see, it's got like a white mistiness to it. Now, over an hour and a half to two hours, especially with the filters on this, I'd expect that to be getting very clear by now, which suggests to me that the filter pads in the FX6 aren't quite fine enough for those tiny particles. Basically, what you see in there with that misting is like microscopic clumps of dust and stuff coming together. So we need to put something in that can pull that out with uh, like real fine filter floss. Yeah, I've got some in here. There we go. And I need a power head. Perfect. So yeah, filter floss goes in. Quite a lot there actually. Ah, screw it, I'll use it all. <laughs> Chuck it back on. Tilting it up to get the air out. There we go. Should start up straight away. Got a little extension lead here. There we go. Now that should clear it pretty quickly. Um, well, it's a lot of water actually, and that's a tiny power head. So maybe not like very, very quickly, but still, it will do the job. Oh, I've got some stray leaves there as well. Better catch them out. Oh, a quick one for you guys. A lot of you have been asking where you can get the Endler hoodie from. Um, I wasn't gonna release this. I just did it for Aquashella last year, but so many of you have been asking. This is now available on my uh, website. If you just click down below somewhere in the link. Yeah, you can go and take a look. I've got lots of other merch as well, if you're interested. All supports the channel, so yeah, thanks very much. So many of you have bought the frog one, by the way, that my, uh, that my son made, so yeah, thanks so much. I'm glad you've all been sending me your pictures as well on Instagram. So good, thanks a lot. Anyway, back to the vid. Oh, look at this sun beaming in. Whoa, that's bright. But it does make nice little rainbows on the floor. From the, uh, from the Malawi cichlid tank. Right, so CO2. Now, initially, I wasn't gonna put CO2 on this because I thought, you know, 95% of my tanks don't, oh my God, I sound so bad, don't I? <laughs> I'm quite, I'm quite, uh, I'm suffering more later in the day. Oh, I'm so nasally. Sorry, I do apologize, but I still, I wanna get this done. So 95% um, of my tanks do not have CO2 systems on them. I kind of like that. I like the challenge without it. If any of you have ever used CO2 before, you'll know that it makes things way easier. The plants look better, they grow faster, which means less algae because there's less nutrients because the, the plants are taking up any excess nutrients just really fast. It's like turbocharging. It's actually harder to start like an ecosystem style tank with just a light, no filter, or even a small filter. It's, it's way harder than a full tech CO2 system I've found anyway. But then I thought this is like, this is my dream tank, yeah? And if I'm gonna have one tank that's full on with everything, you know, I've got like the UV clarifier, I've got four lights on here. It's absolutely amazing, big filtration. I might as well go all in and do full on CO2 as well. Now, as I always say to you guys, I am not a fan of having the, uh, the like fire extinguisher, if you like, that you've got to go and get refilled. I don't like having to rely on going somewhere to get stuff. I like stuff to come to me, so it's available at any time. I wouldn't even know where to get CO2, to be honest. So with that, I'm gonna use the Colombo kits that I've used before. I know them well, I know they work brilliantly. I know they last a good amount of time as well. Oh, here comes the old trolley again. This is one of the best things I've ever made, actually. I use it all the time. So I've got one here on the red tank, which, uh, it doesn't, it, you don't require CO2 to make plants red, don't think you do, but what it does do is make them grow faster, which means you can have more powerful lighting, which means they go even more red. So you, you kind of do, you kind of don't. For instance, this has run out now and it's been run out for quite a while, but uh, the plants are still growing, still doing brilliantly and still are really red. So what I like about it is, is first of all, it looks stylish. It comes with a solenoid and you can buy packets of the ingredients that you just pour in. You get instant pressure, which lasts for, well, Depends how much you want to put in, but most of the time for me, it lasts about a month to a month and a half. Now, obviously on a tank this size, we've got two of them, so we don't need to go crazy amounts of bubbles per second. You can get drop checkers and everything that tell you it's the right color, which means it's the right CO2. I don't really rely on that. All I do is just get some bubbles going in there, and that seems to be enough for me anyway. Probably not the proper way of doing it, but I find it works well. So in the kit, you've got your plug, obviously. This attaches to the solenoid. Where did I put that? Ah, oh, there we go. It's part of the drop checker. So you plug it in on there and it can switch it off and on, on a timer, which means overnight you don't need it running. I always set it so that it comes on when the lights come on. 
you've got your pressure regulator. So once you put in all the ingredients, it goes up to the top of that green zone. So it tells you how much you've got left. Got like a moisture filter thing, which I guess stops moisture. <laughs> some little stop valves and then your hose as well. And then you've also got your diffuser, which has this nice little twirly thing which shows the bubbles coming out. Quite a nice little touch. Yeah, I like it. So yeah, it's very simple. You buy these little, oh, buy these little packets separately. Two components. I think one's citric acid and one is bicarb. Uh, and then basically you just put both of those two in there, fill it up with the water that it says, like 200 or 300 mil at an angle. You can hear it start fizzing straight away. You get the lid on and you've got instant CO2. Try not to do what I just did and spill a load. That's why I don't like these splitty tops because it goes a bit funny. I like to, get off. I like to actually trim it. Pour that in as well. Now we're going to add water now, but before that, I just need to attach the moisture filter to the actual pressure gauge. And then 300 ml of water at an angle, but you want to be quick with this because the reaction starts taking place straight away. So as soon as you've poured it in, you want to put the lid on. Can you hear it? Hang on. It's hissing away. Can you hear that? Lid on. There we go, that is sealed. Now the pressure is already going up. You sort of want to wait till it's in the green zone because that means it's at a, a pressure that can remain stable. And then we've got our little linkage thingy that goes on there, locks on. I'm guessing this is just a spare. So like, yeah, you can take it off because there's already one on there and that can just sit in like that. There we go, it's all closed off though. If I open that tap now, it'll start coming out. Now you can just fill the bubble count with water, but over time the bubbles do sort of draw it out. Um, I like to use this, I've got this bubble counter fluid, which is like more, more thicker and it just, it just seems to last a lot longer. Pour it in. Then you just reattach the top. And then you can take off this top piece and attach the hosing. So the clamp goes on the hose first. The hose goes over the nipple, like that. Then screw it back down and that locks everything in place. So I can now place that into the cabinet, run the hose into the tank, attach the, uh, the diffuser with the suction cups provided and with the non-return valve as well, very important, otherwise you can, you can flood stuff. <laughs> and then it's ready to go. Right, there we go, CO2 is in, goes all the way up the top, round the back. And as you can see there, it's plugged in and the solenoid is on. Obviously I'll put a timer on it in a little bit, but I just wanna get it going first. There we go, look, you can see it's just over one bubble a second. I think that'll be enough on both sides. Not quite made its way through yet, but it will shortly. You just have to be patient. Oh, no, no, there we go. It's just starting to come through now. We're still hazy. Uh, hopefully by the morning, this will be pretty clear. Right, it's coming through properly now. So as you can see, it's going straight up and hitting the surface. We can do better than that. I'm thinking if I just put it to the back, behind those stems you can see there, it'll go straight in the flow and actually get pushed around the tank. There we go, look, you can barely even see it now. Bubbles are just rising up into the outflow. You don't have to put the check valve in the water like me. In fact, it's probably better if you don't, but uh, it doesn't matter. Those stems are gonna grow so fast, you won't even see it. So it's been several days since I filled the whole thing up, fitted all the filters, fitted all the CO2. And uh, as you can see, it's a little bit murky again. So what it's done, it went not, I wouldn't say crystal clear, it went pretty clear and now it's come back murky again. Now, I think this is because all of those plants that I put in from all of the other tanks had tons of beneficial bacteria on them and it's sort of trying to cycle, but there's no food source. Now, ordinarily what I would do in this situation, and this is something that content creators probably don't tell you, but I'm gonna show this because it's part of the process and I think it's important. Normally what I would do in this situation, say it's a four foot tank, which is a quarter nearly, of the uh, overall volume of this. What I do is just pull the water down, fill it back up again. And then by the time I sort of put the fish in, they're gonna be adding ammonia and things to the uh, beneficial bacteria colony that's actually there. It will continue to grow and be absolutely perfect. Now with this amount of water, if I start doing like 100% water changes on it, I think I'm gonna get a hefty bill come through the post. So I don't think that's an option in this one and it's not feasible. So I need to make this bacteria bloom go on its own. It's not algae, it's bacteria because uh, Obviously I've got the UV steriliser for any like green water algae. So this is definitely a bacteria bloom. 
What we can do though is feed the tank. I think it's called ghost feeding from what I've heard, which basically means um, you can you sprinkle food in and the bacteria has then got, like the breakdown of that creates the food, the ammonia. As you can tell, I'm feeling a lot better. I've still got a bit of a throat, like whoa, like I don't normally sound like this. <laughs> the hips seems pretty good as well, so yeah. <laughs> That's great news, but yeah, let's get feed in the tank. Now, obviously with the tank being this big, we're gonna need a half decent amount, aren't we? So, just gonna put a sprinkle of flake in the top like that, and just leave it. And at this stage as well, there's no point in putting beneficial bacteria in there, like the, the bottle stuff I used, you know, like quick start. There's no point, there's no fish in there. I only ever add that when the fish are actually going in and it works perfect. I find that if you put the beneficial bacteria in now, all it's gonna do is the same thing. It's just gonna die off and not colonize because there's no food source. Obviously, if I kept you know, feeding like this, but I'm just gonna do this just to see over the next few days if it does clear on its own, and then we can put the fish in because I don't really wanna spoil the whole thing by putting fish in when it's misty. It's just, no, that's, that ruins the whole effect for me. It ruins the whole video, the whole series. So it, those fish are not going in here until that background looks jet black. <laughs> Oh, and the other thing I want to do is add in some leaf zone because we've got all these epiphytes. There's no nutrients in the water. Well, there will be a little bit of nutrients in the water, but there's not a lot. So I want to make sure the tank is dosed, even for the stem plants as well, because although they're pushed into the substrate, their root systems have been like traumatized, if you like. So they're not going to be pulling up many nutrients at the moment. So let's just get the water columns sorted out. And for this size tank, I'm going to need most of the bottle. <laughs> That's a lot of leaf zone, but there's a lot of plants, there's a lot of water, makes sense. So it's now been a few days, and as you can see, the tank is clear. So I'm guessing that the ghost feeding worked, either that or it just naturally got clear over time anyway. Could have been being a little bit impatient. Um, obviously it's a bigger tank, everything just takes way more time. Usually for four foot, within a day or two, I can get stuff perfect. It's taking a little bit longer with this one, but still, we're on the right track now. So what I wanna do now is put the lid, or the, the canopy, yeah, canopy on the top, a lot of people say it look better without it. I just think it's going to frame it a lot better. You don't lose barely any of the actual viewable window, probably about an inch or so, but I think, I think it'll just frame it and it'll make it more of a, a special piece. So this was a one-man job last time. Hopefully, hopefully I can do that again. Okay. Right, now I've got all the plugs and everything back there, which I'm going to need to... Ow, that's my finger. <laughs> Step ladder, I think. Oh, I can already see it's gonna look good. Oh, there we go. I think that looks really, really sleek. And it like finishes the whole design, doesn't it? What do you think, Kate? Do you like it better with the lid on? Or canopy on? Yeah, lid on. Lid on, okay, good. That, well, that's both decided. Like, even from further back, look at that. Looks amazing. Absolutely love it. Now, although everything's sort of looking perfect right now, we're not without our issues. There's a few things we need to sort out quickly before adding the fish, because otherwise they will just get worse. And here's some of the things I'm talking about. So the substrate, hopefully you can pick that up. I'm not sure if you can, but there's a slight greenish tinge to some of the sand, which means algae is forming on it. That's no surprise, we've got all four lights on. And it does make that foreground area very bright in comparison to the rest of the tank. Also the wood, as you can see there, has got like a, a fluffiness to it. It's a, it's a bit of an algae bloom. It's to be expected, to be honest. It's a brand new setup. Also, these pieces of wood and the java fern in the middle here I'm talking about, it's closest to the light. So you're, you're far more likely to get algae on that wood without anything to combat it. And down here, look, some of the exposed manzanita that we're seeing there, it's got that sort of jelly forming on it. That's completely normal. It's more like a, a non-hard piece of the wood. It just tends to get that on there anyway. Clean up crew will definitely get rid of that, so I'm not worried about that at all. So the first thing I've got to do is adjust the lights. Now, thankfully, I thought this might be the case. I wanted to start the lights on full power just to see how things went. It's been a week, we're experiencing some issues. So I have got four times controllers. These are superfish controllers, the superfish lights, they go together perfectly. Uh, these allow you to dim the lights, but they also have a timer function which I'm not gonna be using because I've got them all connected to one smart plug, which means I can just switch the whole thing on and off when I want. But these are perfect to get in each one to the exact brightness I want. I'm probably gonna to need to come down to about 70, 60%, I'm thinking to start with and see how that looks. Oh yeah, there we go. I think that's a lot better like everything still looks nice and bright, but the dextrous sand at the bottom isn't getting completely blown out. 
the plants have clearly got enough light as well. So yeah, that's about 60%. No, that is exactly 60% I've got them running on. And it also means less energy used by the tank as well. So uh, hopefully I won't get a horrendous electric. Yeah, I will still get a horrendous electricity bill, but maybe a little bit less now. Here we go then, I have got nine in total. The first fish going in the eight foot aquarium. If I can find a gap. There we go, first fish. Not a showpiece fish, but they're gonna do a great job in here. Is that all of them? Yep, oh, straight on the glass. <laughs> got some really nice color variations actually. We've got the albino one, but this one next to it as well. This one's like a honeycomb, and then there's one above it that's slightly lighter colored. And then there's a, uh, is it a fan tail, I think they call that one? Because it's obviously got a big fanny tail. As they get more comfortable, they're obviously gonna come off the glass and uh, they will eventually just be very drawn to that wood. They'll just be munching on it in no time. Right, let's keep moving on. So I definitely wanna add the phantom tetras. We've got black phantom and we've got red phantom tetras there. They're a small size. They look, will look really great in there. There's a good number of them as well. And then this can be like the, solely the angel tank. I want to redo it so there's more space for the angels as well because they're getting a lot bigger. This tank's obviously dirty because that's where I just got the bristle nose from. But in this tank, we have got January Tetras, Neon Tetras. So I think they'll be really good. In the tank next to them is my Flagacara, which I think I do want to put in at a later date, but not straight away. I just want to get a few small tetras in there first. This tank here, again, I just disturbed it looking for some more bristle nose, but um, it's full of white tetra, white gold. I I'm not sure on the exact name, but if you look at them, every single one of them has got like neon tetra disease. I've been trying my best to cure it. Everything I've tried, it, it seems like a losing battle really, but they're, they're staying alive, they're eating. They don't seem to be like, too bad, I, I, I'm not entirely sure what to do with them at the moment, but uh, I can't put them in with anything else, obviously. But for now, I'm just gonna keep them in, in here, keep trying to treat and uh, hopefully I can clear it up, but it's not very well known from my research to be able to clear up neon tetra disease, but I'm gonna try my best. In this tank here, we've got red chin panchaks. These are great little killifish. I think they'll look fantastic in there as well, that little group, so I'll catch them out. Again, a tiny fish, but uh, they'll add something to the top part of the water. They always stay at the surface. Well, they go down, obviously, but the majority of the time they're at the surface. We've got some really nice harlequins in this tank. Again, they'll be perfect in there as well. I'm not sticking with just South American or just Asian or anything like that. I'm, I'm just having a nice mix of community fish. Again, I just stirred this tank up looking for bristle nose, which weren't even in there, so I didn't need to, but these are my keyhole cichlids. Again, I want those in there. They're very, very nice fish, very peaceful as well, great for a community but not just yet. Like I say, they're a lot bigger than the Tetra. Not too big. I mean, they're not gonna eat them or anything. It's just bio load to start with. I think I'll just do that at a later date. And then down here, we have got glow light Tetras as well. Again, murky, looking for bristle nose, but um, yeah, they're a really good fish. You cannot go wrong with glow light Tetras, an absolute classic. But yeah, I think we'll start with the Phantom Tetras. I managed to get most of them. There's a couple still left in there that hid away, but here we go. Yes. Oh, first proper swimming around fish. Look at that. <laughs> they look like nothing in this tank. Oh, look at that. Look at that school in action. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Step back and you can, uh, you can barely see them, but that was kind of what I wanted to go for. They are literally all staying together. That's so cool. Right, let's get in some friends in as well. I'm gonna get the glow lights in. So we've got a group of about 15, 10 to 15 of the glow lights. Oh, yes. Looking good straight away. That's the beauty of being able to transport them straight over from the fish wall. They're already coloured up and just not stressed and they look great. And I shouldn't be jumping down from the ladder like that because that's what done my hip in last time. <laughs> Took me days to get over that. Interestingly, the, uh, the glow lights have chose to find a little back area just to get comfortable in. And all the phantoms are still out in the front here, just chilling out in this section. It's going to take a few hours for them all to get sort of comfortable, to be honest. I'm sure before we know it, they're gonna be like all over the tank. So we've got a mix here of gold tetra, January tetra, neon tetra, and a thread fin rainbow as well, I think I saw at some point, maybe, I'm not sure, but let's get these guys in. Now there's quite a lot here, so this should be fun to watch. Whoa, <laughs> look at those. 
Oh, I've poured in a load of crud as well, that's all right. So currently the same situation as before. All of the phantoms are over here. Mix them with some of the glow lights. Oh, they're coming over, they're coming over. Can they sense, do you think? We've got the bristle nose leading the way, but there's all the Januaries and all the neons. They're just gonna go and hide for a little bit. To be honest, that's definitely enough fish, I think, to start with, because that's a decent amount of bio load increase there. I'm gonna stick in some beneficial bacteria as well now. I'm gonna come back in the morning, hopefully they're more settled and they're all over the tank. Right, it's now the next day. Um, all the other lights aren't even on yet. It's quite early. I put the lights on on this tank just so we get like no reflections and just see it in all its glory. It's been on for about an hour and uh, yeah, the fish have settled right in. Look at this, look at it. They're all moving around nicely, enjoying the place. And I've actually stepped back and watched for a little while now and they all seem to sort of ball up in a group after a certain amount of time. And then they'll just all go together at one point. One will go that way and then they'll all just follow on. So that's quite nice to watch. I mean. Obviously they can see me now. Because of the camera settings, it looks darker where I am, well, outside of the tank look than it is. So they can definitely see me. But yeah, I love that there's just lots of action going on everywhere you look, but it's gentle. They're not like going crazy around the tank. It's, it's kind of just serene. And this is the sort of tank you can just sit in front of and just chill out. So for instance, I'm currently sat on my sofa, a little bit further back look, and this is the view you get, just, I don't know, it's just so calming. You can just sit and watch. You can't view the whole tank uh, with your eyes in one shot. You sort of have to look over there and look over there. Look at them going now in front of the glass like that. That looks so cool, doesn't it? I don't reckon I'm gonna get a lot of work done to be honest nowadays because I'm just gonna be sat in front of this watching the fish. And I think what I wanna do in future episodes is get a few more fish to add to it, smaller ones, but I do wanna put in a couple of show pieces as well, some slightly larger ones. They'll actually increase the schooling action, but I won't put anything in that's gonna be predatory, you know? I was thinking about adding some endlers into that top section, just so there's a bit of action at the top. Uh, they'll also breed as well, which might be quite interesting. Let me know what you think. Are they, are enders a bit too messy? I don't know, I do love them, remember? Of course, the only thing is at the moment is that this tank has given me like a proper utopia vibe. Whereas t guppies, for instance, not so much endlers, but guppies are very chaotic. So I'm not sure that'd really suit the style of the tank, but enders a little bit more chill, a lot, a lot smaller than guppies as well. I reckon it could possibly work. And I know a lot of you are probably disappointed that at the moment there's no cardinals in there. Don't worry, I, I have a solution for that in the next episode. <laughs> Not a thousand though, okay? It won't be a thousand. Anyway, that is all for this one. If you guys wanna watch just the tank, I'm gonna put some shots up now of just the, like an overview of the whole thing for a few minutes just for you to enjoy. Uh, if you don't, then I'll see you for some more action on the next one. To be honest, looking at it now, I'm kind of thinking that there's, there is enough fish in terms of small ones. It might get a bit too, a bit too much. It might take away by adding more. <laughs> and this is coming from me. So yeah, I'm just gonna sit with this and see how I feel. And then we'll find out in the next episode. There's definitely more fish, it's just, I think it'll be a few more feature fish. I do really want some Colombians though. Hmm.